I think it has already been achieved, really. Uh, for a start, South Africa believes in multilateralism, that we could get this World Health Assembly, the 73rd, taking place in the first place is a victory for multilateralism in a context where we, the way we come out of this is through a stronger multilateral base and in particular the UN system. The World Health Assembly is the first of major events of the UN, UN to be held under conditions imposed by the, 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 the pandemic COVID-19. All 192 member states are going to participate and uh, already we have an outcome uh, to be tabled uh, in the form of a resolution that covers the most important areas for South Africa. So we have achieved something already, even as we go into the, the, the World Health Assembly. I'll get to the resolution in a bit. I want to talk about uh, prior discussions we had about some of the heavy list lifters on the world yes. stage. Uh, President Ramaphosa, as AU chairperson, will be among the keynote speakers in the high-level segment of mon on Monday. Speak to that. Let me just actually uh, preface my answer by what member states of the UN are saying, that they are immensely grateful to our president for giving leadership at a time when global leadership is needed, sorely, sorely needed. Our president, together with uh, Chancellor Angela Merkel, Merkel and uh, President Macron of France and the Secretary General of the UN, uh, including in a partnership including Bill Gates, were the first to say, as global leaders, we're in this together. We know it is frightening. We know it creates insecurity, but we best deal with this together. We are in this together. We hear the anguish of the people. We know their needs need to be taken into account. And we need to come together, above all, to make sure that a vaccine and the other tools that are necessary for fighting COVID-19 uh, are developed so that everybody has access to these in an equitable manner without any impediments to 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 acquiring those particularly let's, let's talk about uh, that language right the equitable and affordable access to a possible vaccine and therapeutics this is a major focus of the draft resolution it's one of the operational paragraphs of that resolution are you getting a sense ambassador that there is unity in the world assembly around the equitable distribution of a future vaccine to have it in a resolution you have to understand that to have it in a resolution in the first place, including language that mentions the WTO TRIPS flexibilities is an incredible thing. Where the resolution is at, it's not going to be changed. That is language that is final. And that is indicative of a consensus that was hard fought for. And uh, 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 developing countries were able to rally around. Remember, multilateralism is a matter of give and take, but the, 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 the red lines for the African continent were understood and there was a sensitivity uh, to, 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 to those. So nobody's going to remove that language in the resolution. It's embedded now in the resolution. President Ramaphosa also joined uh, in a letter uh, this past week a number of world leaders calling for a free vaccine for all. That's not in the resolution. Is that something the World Health Assembly could grapple with uh, in the week ahead? That is an aspirational thing that, uh, that, that is articulated broadly with, uh, 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 in, the, in, in the other document. Uh, remember that uh, within the multilateral system, it's always a matter of give and take, but what we have in the language that we have is extraordinary and the maximum we will achieve in the context of the, of the UN at a time when the UN system is under attack and is being challenged. That is the context in which we got the language. At a time when multilateralism is under attack and is being a challenge. So there's no way in which this language will go away. It will re remain. Let me ask you about some of the other hot uh, topics at this, uh, certainly uh, hot issues at, at the World Assembly. Uh, what can you say, Ambassador, about the Taiwan issue? 
the observer status that Taiwan is seeking at the World Health Organ, uh, the, the World uh, Health Assembly, which is, we understand has re-emerged in full force in in the days uh, past. There's a vote on Monday on Taiwan seeking observer status. Can you speak to that? This recurs every year. This this is not the first time this has uh, happened. It routinely it happens uh, every year that. Uh, the issue of uh, Taiwan is raised in relation to the one China uh, 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 policy. So this is not unusual. What uh, 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 is probably creating a, a confusion is, is miscommunication by a diverse range of, of people around uh, this. The World Health Organization is an intergovernmental body of 192 members. They decide what happens they decide what rules are put in place. And it's not the Director General of the World Health Organization who does that, Dr. Tedros. So it's inaccurate to say Taiwan did not get an invitation from Dr. Tedros because he doesn't issue such invitations. We go there as member states. The second thing that is not accurate is that uh, Taiwan has been excluded from uh, collaboration and the processes of the, of the, of the WHO. That is not accurate. As I'm talking to you, there are Taiwanese uh, uh, technical experts collaborating with technical experts from all over the world. That has been the case. It was the case with SARS. It was the case with Ebola. It's, it's just always been uh, uh, the situation. The unfortunate thing is that the noise that this has created it is creating a political dynamic that really we, we, we hope uh, is going to be managed in the traditional way that this is managed, that uh, 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 further consideration is given uh, to, to... There's a way in which it's managed every year. It's not the first time it's come up. It comes up routinely. Ambassador, the resolution will also call for a review into the WHO's response into the COVID-19 outbreak. This will be an important part of a plan for anyone to address you know, some of the accusations of missteps. Can you speak to that, that review in the future? Every time, according to the WHO procedures, there is a, health, a global health emergency or a pandemic. There has to be a review of the response. When SARS happened, there was a review of the response. When Ebola happened, there was a review of a response. These are routine things. However, the climate into which we go into uh, uh, WHE 73 has got a lot of noise, as, as, as I said. And those reviews actually look at the response of member states because the WHO is as good as the sum total of its member uh, states. It looks at, uh, you know, it, 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 you will see that the language is focused on the global response in the tradition of uh, the manner in which these uh, reviews uh, uh, are done. And the timing of it is, is, is when we are clear, we're out of the danger of the pandemic uh, gaining ground or gaining momentum and done also by existing mechanisms that the WHO has. It has its own mechanisms that have been agreed upon by member states. This is a routine man manner. When you have something of this nature, there must be a review of uh, the global response to it. So Ambassador, given the public position of the United States, right, the call specifically from Republicans for Dr. Tedros to resign, holding back funding and that sort of thing, how would you characterize your delegation's interactions with the United States delegation to the World Health Assembly uh, and, and, and their input in the draft resolution? Well, they interact with us as they do with any other delegations. They negotiated hard the things they wanted in the resolution, but there's democracy in the, the beauty of multilateralism is that it's democratic. The smallest state counts, the equal sovereignty of states matters. Nobody can say, South Africa cannot say to all the member states, whether you like it or not, we will have this language in a resolution. So a country is as good as its negotiators. And luckily, South Africa is the best. <laughs> I'll take your word for it, Ambassador. Uh, yes, it is the best. A final, final question for you. We understand that there's a great deal of pressure on Dr. Tedros to resign. What are you hearing? What are you hearing in the corridors in Geneva? 
we are not aware, we're not hearing anything. In fact, I was talking to Dr. Tevos about an hour ago. As African, as the African group of ambassadors, we find it extraordinary that when there is a crisis of such uh, proportions, the person at the helm of an organization that must lead us is under such extreme pressure. But we also marvel at the way in which day in and day out, he wakes up, he holds his head high, and he performs expertly, undeterred by the noises that he, he hears about his function. But he's not about criticism, right? He's not about criticism. It has gone beyond just me. The campaign, I think, has, has been an extraordinary campaign. We've not witnessed anything, I dare say, in the history of multilateralism in recent years that we get into a global situation where all of us, all countries are supposed to rise together. Instead of rising together, there is blaming, a game, you know, uh, blaming who did this, who did that. It's rather like your house is on fire rather than you know, put out the fire. You're searching for maybe the cinder that might have caused the fire. And in the course of that, you're likely to burn yourself. Ambassador Nozipa Mkakatu Diseko, South Africa's ambassador to the United Nations in Geneva and other international organizations, including the World Health Organization. Thank you for speaking with us. Thank you very much, Sherwin.